Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and I've been having a look at this modern art Sudoku pack that we've created or no, not that we've created, that's nonsense it's been created by members of the uh, CTC fan discord server as it says here and uh, the November edition of the monthly puzzle prompt theme was modern art and the results were so good that they've created this document, which we've been very happy to release. It's on Patreon. Um, if you just go there, there's no, it's not behind the paywall. You can have a look at this, um, whoever you are. And you can, of course, print out any of these puzzles. Uh, there are, what's that, 3, 6, 9, 13, 18 of them, I think. Um, special thanks to... Uh, Back Power for putting them together, Glum Hippo for selecting and crediting the reference artwork, and Shy for designing, and the beautiful front page there. So, um, well done to these setters. I mean, there were there were other submissions as well that could equally well have gone in this, but uh, that's a Banksy work you can recognise. Dali, Banksy again, Warhol. I mean, it's just fantastic. All of these incredible pictures realised in the first section... And then some just generic sort of <laughs> starry, starry night. <laughs> That's brilliant. And then some uh, Mondrian, some fairly generic themes after that, uh, including the one I've just chosen to have a go at. So don't know why. Um, Andy Warhol, Thermo Sudoku by Bill Murphy, inspired by the works of Andy Warhol. Um, I don't know Bill Murphy, in fact, but... What I have seen is that this is a thermo puzzle. So I know the rules, at least without having to think too hard about how they work. Um, the rules are normal Sudoku rules apply. And along the thermos, the numbers, the digits have to increase every step from the bulb to the end. And uh, do have a go at the puzzle on the link below the video. Um, but... As I say, at least I understand how this one works, and I'm going to have a go now. So let's get cracking. Um, well, we've got some long thermos. This actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three of them are eight cells long. I think this one's only seven. So what I'm going to do, I don't know why I'm doing it this way. Actually, it'll probably just be quicker to go round the thermo, filling in the two possibilities in most cells for three of these thermos and then when we get to the smaller one there's one more degree of freedom so there will be three possibilities per cell if my maths is right and frankly i've done enough thermos that i'm confident that's right so i think the quickest way to do this is to fill in all these possibilities and then start looking for doubles and triples and Possibly quadruples and quintuples, maybe, but uh, who knows? We might find something else out about the possibilities, but at least we have the absolute given range of what could be in each cell. Yeah, okay, look, there's a 3 4 pair. Actually, there's also a 6 7 pair in row 8, but the 3 4 pair acts on this cell. That's definitely got to be a 2. And we can trace that back down to the beginning of the thermo. This now has to be a 1. Oh, and that's that's absolutely fixed the top left thermo. This cell now has to be a 2. And once that's a 2, we can go all the way to the end of this thermo. And, yeah, once that's a 2 on an 8-cell thermo, it has to go all the way up the numbers. Right, so let's look across. 3 and 8 in this row, so we can get rid of 3 there. And eight there, four and seven in the next row, but now we're only getting rid of the middle numbers, which isn't doing enough limiting. Ah, until we get here. Six and five are looking at that, making it a four. That makes that a seven, and now we can go up to the ends, both ends of this thermo, and fill it in completely. So both of the two kind of northern thermos done there. Um, now let's look down. No, no. Ooh, no, not even two, three, four. So none of those affect the ones at the bottom. No. Ah, eight, mm, not very helpful, makes that a nine. Oh, so we haven't got very far with the south ones. Um, ah, but where does one go in this box? Got to be here now. 
So, hmm, okay, I don't know quite what to do. Right, so we're going to probably have to do some Sudoku <laughs> in our Thermo Sudoku, unsurprisingly. What I mean by that is spent a lot of time doing um, Thermo logic, but now we're going to move back to normal Sudoku logic. So, what have we got? Ah, look, this cell, 83129 going across, 76 going down, so that's a 4-5 and makes a pair with this one, so that ought to help. It makes this either 3 or 8, which isn't actually all that helpful. But I guess on this thermo, it can find some digits. So 5 must now be in one of those cells. They're the only ones where 5 is possible. 7 must be in one of those. So, sorry, there'll be a 7 there. Ooh, I meant to put a 5 there. Um, that 5 doesn't really read across into anything very useful. Oh, that's quite irritating. I thought we would have some greater purchase on the grid as a result of this work. Okay, let's have a look up the top. We've got quite a few digits. So, 3 is in one of these cells. Actually, that's quite interesting down below, because 3 is confined to there. So, the 3 in column 1 has to be in box 4. 4, 8's up here, 9's here, ah, that 7 is looking, is forcing 7 in box 3 up to the top, so now we can place a 7, this, this is, oh, that's 4, 5, 6, and this is 4, 5, 6, I don't think we can make bigger deductions than that. 2 now has to be down here. Quick check down the grid, that doesn't really help there. Um, how about this central box then? Box 2. Nothing really obvious about that to me. 7. Um, Okay, 9 and 1 can't be in that cell. So they must both... Okay, 1 has to be in one of these two. 9, though, could be in any of those four. And that's not very helpful. Is the 1 any use there? Not really. If the 1 was there, that would fix the whole of the thermo. Can I use that somehow? At least to determine that one isn't there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That seven would make a six there. Five, four, three. No, I don't think I can use that. That's irritating. Right, let's look along this row again. 3 and 4 are a pair, 6 and 7 are a pair, 2. So the rest are 1, 5, 8, 9. That one can't be a 1, but these could be any number as far as I can see. However, look at this. That is a 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 quintuple, sort of thing I was saying we would look for. Right, actually, I could have seen it as a 6, 7, 8, 9 quintuple. That would have been a quadruple. That would have been simpler, but anyway... Got there now. Five is there. One now has to be in one of these cells. I said that before. No change on that. Um, <clears throat> nine must be in one of these two. Which isn't very... Okay, it takes nine out of those. No, it doesn't push me further forward much at all. Now, if 4 was here, that would have to be a 4, which would make this a 4. Ah, that would put 3 here, and 3 couldn't go here. So that was based on, if this was a 4, 4 would be there, and there, and 3 would be there, and couldn't fit in this box. So this is not a 4. Excellent. So that's a 5. 
obviously, it's the only other choice. And that can go out towards the end of the thermometer, filling them all in. So that's not 9, and this is not 9. So 9's confined to one of those. 1 is still in one of those two. These can't be 8. Ah, so that one is a 9. This is a 6. They're all done now. And that makes this a 5, and I can feed that back to the beginning or the, the smaller part of that thermometer. That 3 makes this an 8. So that whole thermometer and box is done. Right, 4 here. This is a 1-8 pair. Ah, which is a little surprising, as it means the 9 is not there where I thought it was going to be. The 9 is here now. So 2, 3. That is 2 or 3, because it can't be 7. So the 7 is here. That is 2 or 3, and these are from 2, 3, and 4, and include a 4. Right, 2, 4, 3 pair there. 9, 8, 7 must be here. 6, 1, 5 are a triple there. That makes this a 2, which means we've done that whole thermometer. We've done all four thermometers. So now we are just in classic Sudoku mode, I guess. 8 and 3, that fixes 1 and 8. Last digit in column 7 is a 5. We've got a 1, 4, 6 triple up here. Um, 5, that can't be 6, but more importantly, this can't be 4. So that's a 5, that's a 4. We can go to 6 here. That fixes the whole triple. Box 3 is complete. 1 and 3 up here. Yep, they go straight in. 8 and 6 here. 5 and 9, 2 and 6. Yes, this is coming together nicely now. 5, 8 and 3. That one's got to be a 5. It's a naked single, which is a surprise appearance for a naked single in this Warhol painting. 2, 7 and 4 there. 1 and 9 here. Yep, they are done. Surely this 1, 5, 6 triple. Yes, it is all complete. Thanks to that 6, 5 and that 5. That's now a 7, which fixes the 4, 7 pair. This is the last digit in its column. It's an 8. That fixes 3 and 8. We've just got boxes 5 and 8 to finish off. 3, 9, 2, 1, 6 and 4 to go. Yep, they're straightforward. 3, oh no, I'd missed this bottom right corner. 4 and 1 more. That should be a 2. And I think that completes the puzzle. So, great, good fun there. Nice, clean thermo. I mean, it's really impressive in a way to know that you can make a completely unique grid that's, you know, that's solved with a bit of bite to it, with just four thermos. And uh, confined to the corners of the grid, I believe this is kind of pop art style, very much what Andy Warhol created, although I don't think this relates to a specific painting, but possibly Fred, uh, sorry, Bill Murphy can tell us different. Um, anyway, great fun there, and uh, I hope you had a go at that puzzle. That was reasonably approachable, thank goodness. So um, I hope the colours weren't too off-putting. That was maybe the only problem with solving it, uh, and you'll be solving it in our regular software. So I think the color is a little more muted perhaps there. Anyway, thanks very much for watching and certainly hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.